ultimate transformation of consciousness involves transformation of the body, the mind, the spirit, the soul, the mm -hmm. feelings including the body, including the body chemistry. Uh -huh. and, uh, mm -hmm. and for example, that's not so, uh, doesn't, it sounds more outrageous than it is because when you think about somebody who gets healed or heals mm -hmm. themselves even better or has a spontaneous remission of some tumor or some disease mm -hmm. or some illness process, that's a psychophysical transformation, including somatic mm -hmm. transformation of a very high order that that person mm -hmm. has unconsciously kind of magically produced in themselves. And the key metaphor, I should think, for physical transformation would be the caterpillar to butterfly. Caterpillar to butterfly is, in fact, one of the oldest kind of poetic ones. Uh, I wanted to actually come back to something you asked about earlier, which is we think of metaphors as being, you know, the language of poetry yes. and literature. And this is this is true. This was, was for me some, something of a revelation a few years ago when I came across the work of some Berkeley uh, philosophers, George Lakoff and Mark Johnson, wrote a, a very important book, I think, called uh, Metaphors to Live By, mm -hmm. and where they point out that um, <laughs> our, our ordinary language, including our, therefore our ordinary thought, is much more pervasively metaphorical than we ordinarily think that it's shot through with implicit metaphors, metaphors that we don't recognize as such. And they make a point of sort of mm -hmm. uncovering these and showing that in actual fact, when you get right down to it, is our, our language and our thinking itself probably is maybe up to 80 or 90 percent metaphorical. Especially American speech. We have so, so much vernacular. Right, mm -hmm. although I would say actually that even um, beyond that, because I've given talks and so forth in Europe and in other languages, uh, where I find the same metaphors exist, oh. you know, but uh, obviously in different words uh -huh. and sometimes slightly different images, but the underlying structure is the so same. So you're saying it's, it goes beyond just it, being something as remote, say, as poetry or literature. It's implicit in our language. That's right. It's mm -hmm. implicit in our language. And a good example of an implicit metaphor that most people don't realize is one that they mention as an example is, is the notion that money is somehow liquid. You know, we talk oh, yeah. about cash flow, we mm -hmm. talk about liquid assets, right. uh, liquidating and so forth. So the idea that money is somehow like a liquid, it flows like a liquid. Now why that should be so is anybody's guess, but it has that structure. Um, and so, uh, now let me give you an example of a metaphor f from the realm of transformation of consciousness. So, well you mentioned the, butterf the caterpillar to butterfly. Yeah ancient uh, used, you know, you find it used by uh, Zhuang Tzu in the 4th century BC in China, the mm -hmm. old Taoist philosopher. I dreamt that I was, was a, a butterfly, right. or I, was I a butterfly dreaming, dreaming I was Chang Tzu? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, there the notion is that you're comparing the larval stage, the caterpillar stage, to um, our ordinary consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then, so the metaphor is, is a teaching metaphor and it's telling us that <clears throat> After the larva stage, we think um, it's the end, mm -hmm. you know, that after we have in this stage in which we are now, this ordinary consciousness, we think we die and then, then it's all over. And actually, uh, Richard Bach has this great line in one of his books where he says, what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the rest of the world calls butterfly. So from the caterpillars or the larval point of view, we can't see beyond our current framework. Mm -hmm. um, this is where we were grown up, this is how we were conditioned to see and to experience the world. Consensual reality, some people call it. Yeah. And um, yet once we can move into the butterfly stage, it's like we have, we're able to move in more dimensions. Mm -hmm. The butterfly can fly as well as crawl. Um, and so, um, and it can look back then on the larval stage, as it were, and see what was going on there. So we might say that the language, the stories of the mystics and the mythic and poetic and artistic stories of transformation of consciousness that people have written and painted are like the messages from the caterpillar, from the butterfly back to, back to the caterpillar, back to the caterpillar that they once mm -hmm. all were uh, in the form of this. We don't, can't really tell you exactly how it's going to be but it's sort of like this, you know, or it's like this. Mm -hmm. The whole te New Testament, you think of the New Testament, the Gospels, one parable after another. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man going into a far country. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is Jesus' metaphor for a state of consciousness, a state of being, a kind of a blessed 
state of mm -hmm. being of enlightenment. It may sound very imprecise or very unscientific, but what you're no. saying is it's better than science. It's absolutely better because, well, it speaks more to people. It speaks to where they are. It speaks to their actual experience. Yeah. And uh, one metaphor that uh, I talk about in the book is the notion of the journey. Mm -hmm. And this is something that everybody can relate to without exception. For one thing, people very readily experience their own life as a journey. Crossing it starts at birth, and, uh -huh. right? And then yeah. de death is seen as another kind of a journey. And then you might say that the transformation process, the mystical or spiritual transpersonal growth process is like a, a, a journey that branches off from the main journey of life. It's not a journey that everybody takes, but those who are called to take it, this was what uh, Joseph Campbell wrote about in his book, The, the Hero with a Thousand Faces, yeah. he wrote The Hero Myth. Uh, in everybody's, in many people's lives, there comes a certain turning point where they think, they feel what he called it, the call to adventure, like the call to leave behind the everyday world, the common, uh, mm -hmm. ordinary world of family and uh, social reality, and go in quest of something, not, not even quite sure what it is, but somehow motivated. This whole question mm -hmm. of what starts somebody off you know, on the transformation quest or process is a very interesting one. Mm -hmm.